Welcome to the Sayings of Jesus. In today's message, Worry-Free Living, Dr. McLuhan teaches how Jesus empowered his followers to live without worry. Dr. Charles Mayo, founder of the Mayo Clinic, said worry affects circulation, the heart, the glands, the whole nervous system, and profoundly affects health. <clears throat> He said, I've never known a man who died from overwork, but I've met many who died from doubt. What a sobering thought as we come to this great statement of Jesus. Jesus never had a moment of worry, anxiety, or doubt in his whole life. In today's message, we too can learn how to live without worrying about the things that will happen to us. I love the saying of Jesus who invited his followers to live a worry-free life. <clears throat> Somewhere close to this lovely chapel on the Beatitudes is this powerful statement, do not worry about your life, said by Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. In instead of putting these simple words into practice, people worry about just about everything. Surveys tell us that people worry about work, about money, about health, what others think of them. They worry about the past catching up with them, and we worry about our future. Let's take a moment right now and transfer to Jesus whatever worries you came into this building carrying, whatever you came in thinking about other than God because you've just been worrying about it. Let's just transfer it to Jesus. List two or three, just mentally in your mind. I'm not asking you to say it out loud, but you know what they are. And let's turn them over to Jesus. By faith, say with me right now, Jesus, I give these worries to you, and you name them, your health, your future, your image, your children, your grandchildren, your work situation, your finances. Father, we, we put it through Jesus into your hands. I know these are such sound like a simple thing to do, but if you'll do it, you'll feel something lift off your shoulders. Just feel right now, oh, I just feel a weight lifting off of somebody's shoulders. You just transferred to Jesus something that he's been longing to carry from you for a very long time. Now, Jesus was very specific about what he said that there's no need for us to worry about. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body or what you will wear, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. He could not have been more practical. He does not want us to worry about having enough food to eat, water to drink, or our health, or what we wear even on a day like today. Now, think of the people to whom Jesus said this. Most of the people had to grow their own food or trade with others for what they had an abundance of to get food for what they needed. They lived in a time when every drop of water needed to be transported in pots from wells and streams and various sources. There were no running water to just turn a faucet on. People had to make their own clothes. And the practice of medicine was very limited and primitive in those days. And Jesus' teaching brings a life to us to stop worrying, but to think, and he gives us the example of the birds. <laughs> what an interesting illustration Jesus uses. Jesus said, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 26. What beautiful words these are. Now, the example of the bird is so interesting because a bird doesn't wait to be fed. And Jesus is not saying the birds sit on a branch and waiting for God to put food in their mouth. No, they fly and they search for food to find what they need until they find it. But God has put it in the ground for them to go and to pick it up. Isn't it so beautiful to watch birds? Where we live, we see birds every day in our yard picking away and finding what God has put in the soil for them to get. It's not just the early bird that gets the worm. It's every person who searches finds what God has for them. And we too can learn to search out what the Father has for us. We can learn to search for what the Father has without worry or anxiety. This is not just theory. 
This is a very clear teaching from Jesus. It's how he wants you and me to live. And Jesus asked this powerful question. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Matthew chapter 26 and verse 27. Now, I've met people who shortened their life by worrying, but you can't add to your life by worrying, that's for sure. Uh, but you can hurt yourself by worrying. How many of you describe somebody as being a worry wart? <laughs> it's a person who just worries all the time and worries about things there's no need to worry about. And they just worry themselves into a frenzy. Jesus says that worrying cannot add even one hour to how long we live. And so God help us to be free from worry. Plenty of people have died before fulfilling their God-given purposes in life simply by worrying about things that God never intended for them to worry about. Most of the things that we worry about, I'm sure you've heard this said, never happened. And we're worrying about things that the chances of it hitting us are one in a billion, let alone one in a million. Uh, we just worry because the devil wants us to worry. He is the ultimate warrior, and he wants to suck you into his way of thinking and to worry about everything. Again, Jesus said, why do you worry about clothes? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 28. Now, Jesus, I think, is asking a much deeper question than what should I wear today. He's asking us not to worry about what people think about us. Most people spend their life worrying about their image. Uh, she looked at me funny. He didn't look at me right. Uh, and you were just all caught up in, in how we are perceived by others or how we think that we are perceived by others. And Jesus loves you. Just the way you are. You don't have to change anything. He loves you just the way you are. Now, he may help you grow in different areas of your life, but the starting point with Jesus is never to be critical of wherever you are, whatever station you have in life, and whatever experiences that you are facing. Jesus offers another example from nature. He says, see how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor and they do not spin. Now, these words that Jesus used for lilies is actually a wild flower that grows in the open field like enemies and puppies and, and glad, gladiolas and, and irises and, and wild daisies and all these amazing, beautiful things. I, I've seen so many. This is uh, the shore of the Sea of Galilee, what beautiful flowers they are, um, these are. Uh, uh, enemies in all different kinds of colors. Uh, these are red, but you can find them in a whole variety of colors, just growing wildly in the field. It's such a beautiful thing to see them. They do not toil, and they do not spin, uh, Jesus said. Now, the word for spin is such an interesting word. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's the word for, for spinning cotton or for working a wheel, which comes into cotton. Uh, whatever it is, flax or whatever it is that you're sowing. And uh, so Jesus understood that the people were accustomed to spinning that wheel all day long and toiling to make garments that would make themselves beautiful or pretty or attractive or just provide for human covering as we go about life. Now, these flowers would have been clearly visible to the people who heard uh, Jesus make that statement. And so I remember in our first home on on Cape Cod, it was a, we had a half an acre, it was a fairly large and a small house, and just part of it we left in the wild. And every summer, these beautiful wild flowers used to grow up, and I used to think I'd mow it, and, and Pastor Mark said, now let's just enjoy the flowers. And so we mowed this part of the yard and not that part of the yard, and just enjoyed the beauty that God has for us. And there's some beauty that God wants to bring up into your life. You don't have to do anything about it. It just springs up because it is within you. Jesus said, the flowers don't toil and they don't spin. Now, they're particularly beautiful. I love it now in many of our highways in America. Uh, the uh, transportation departments are planting wild flowers at intersections. Have you noticed that at some of the exit? All these beautiful wild flowers. They're so beautiful to see. It's a testament to us that God, out of his own soil, produces beauty for us to enjoy. And he gave King Solomon as an example of someone who worked hard at looking good. Uh, we can certainly say that. All of his clothing is described, and people worked hours and hours and hours to clothe that man. 
but the scripture says, Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor dressed like one of these beautiful wild flowers, Matthew chapter 6 and 29. There's a beauty about you that's brought by the Spirit of God. It's not from outside. It's from the inside out. It's a glow. Have you ever met a person who says, she's glowing or he's glowing? just radiates the Spirit of God coming out of you. Jesus followed up the statement about Solomon with a great question. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow it is thrown into the fire, how much more Will he clothe you, O you of little faith? What wonderful words these are. And what a deep question this is. And it's a question of faith. Uh, Jesus always pulled us into a deeper relationship with him through faith. Jesus is clearly saying that God wants to have a relationship with his children. He wants to clothe us. He wants his beauty to shine through our lives. He wants us to believe that he is willing and able to provide for our needs. He wants us to trust him and not worry about the things that most people worry about. Jesus said it's a matter of faith. He always pulled people to listen to him, the people listening to him, to stretch their faith. When Jesus said you have a little faith, it wasn't near as critical as the faith you have is enough. Hear it that way. When Jesus says, your faith is small, he's saying even that amount is enough if you will exercise it. And God wants to take care of us and help us. He's interested in the smallest details of our life, the things that we face. Now, this is the fourth time that Jesus commands us not to worry. Uh, It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or drink, or what shall we wear? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31. One translation puts it this way Make up your mind to stop worrying and stop saying, What shall we eat, or drink, or wear? Isn't that a lovely translation? Make up your mind to stop worrying. So it is not a suggestion. To worry is to disobey a clear instruction from Jesus. May God help us to walk in what he has designed and planned for us to walk in. Jesus said that the people who don't know God and don't have a relationship with God live with worry and anxiety the most. It's a mark of people who have not learned to put their trust in God. And this is what Jesus said. The pagans run after these things, but your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 32. The New Living Translation puts it this way. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows about your needs. Now, if unbelievers are dominated by thoughts of unbelief, it would be natural. But when believers are dominated by thoughts of unbelief, it is unnatural. And God is pulling us. This is not a sermon of guilt. It's a, it's a sermon of challenge to pull you into what God has for you, what God has for me. So what dominates your thought life? Jesus said there's no need for us to waste our time and energy worrying about things that God already knows that we need. Say with me, God knows my need. Say it with me. God knows my need. He knows your need. No joke. He really does. And yet we talk to him like we're informing him about a crisis that we're facing when he already knows exactly what you are facing. God knows our need and already has a plan to meet us at our point of need. God would not ask us to not worry without giving us a powerful alternative to worrying. And here is God's solution to worry. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness And all these things will be given to you as well. Speaking about the things Jesus has just spoken of, what we eat, what we drink, what we clothe, all the things that we need for life. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I want you to do more than have this verse memorized. This is a verse many people quote, but we need it in our spirits as practical application. So many people have prayed for me 
as I have battled prostate cancer. And I appreciate those who have stood with me and helped us in many different ways, very practical ways. We've received help from people. Somebody came by and said, I won't cut your grass for the next four weeks and had a blessing. Just a simple thing uh, to help me. Uh, God is in so many ways has showed his ability to take care and to provide for us. Now, I've noticed that some people have appeared to have more anxiety than I have had about cancer. There may be some reasons for that. They may have lost a loved one to cancer. or I'm, I'm not criticizing at all, but I find myself often, more often than not, encouraging people who are discouraged because I have cancer or because I had cancer, let's put it that way. One person wrote to me and said, why is this happening to you? <laughs> and it was a loving comment, but the person was genuinely per per perplexed. And it's clear that person was saying, you're a pastor. You shouldn't be ha this shouldn't be happening to you. And maybe you said to yourself, I'm a follower of Jesus. This shouldn't be happening to me. And yet, it has happened to you. Now, while I don't believe for a single second that God gave me cancer, it's clear to me that he has walked with me every step of the way. And he invited me, as he invites all of us, to seek first the kingdom of of God or the kingdom of heaven. Now, one way we seek first his kingdom is by asking him to speak to us about the devil, what the devil wants us to worry about. Now, every time you get a worrying thought, you can assure yourself it's not from heaven. It's from the enemy. It's from the enemy wanting you to doubt the goodness of God. And I did exactly that when I began to suffer the way I was suffering over the last uh, couple of years. I did exactly that, and he did exactly what he said. He spoke to me. Last night, I looked back through my journal for the word cancer. Do you know that it only found it seven times? It didn't have much press in my, uh, in my journal because God had spoken to me. God told me that I had cancer before the doctors diagnosed it. And this is what God said to me. You'll survive. I'll show you the path to follow. Keep your peace, and I will heal your prostate. These rhema words from the Lord help carry me through the lowest moments in my journey. And when you're in a low moment, the best thing you can do is get a word from God and hold on to that word and believe that word. That is seeking the kingdom of God. And he will indeed speak to you. These are among many words that the Lord has given me. <clears throat> there were some delays in the process. And uh, some people were frustrated, family were frustrated. Well, why is this being delayed? You need to be treated right now. Call the doctor's office and tell them you have to, I have to see you right now. And there was something inside of me that said that. But uh, wanted that as well. But, but over the delays, God got me to the treatment that I needed. And had I been treated two years ago when I first was aware that there was a problem, I would not have had what God had in store for me. He showed me that I could trust him every step of the way along my healing journey. And you too can trust him every step of the way along whatever it is that you are facing. <clears throat> Uh, Jesus will help you. He'll release to you words to help you overcome your challenge. Whenever Satan tempts you to worry, give your worry to Jesus, and he will carry it for you. Ask him for a word to build your faith to trust him. Jesus ended this powerful saying with these words of hope for tomorrow. Therefore, do not be worried about tomorrow. Say it with me. Do not be worried about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. That's for all of us. You're watching online. You're worried about tomorrow, but God has it in his hands. I was, I was thinking about my future. Uh, I had questions. What will my future be? And again, I turned to Jesus for answers. And this is what I found in my journal. I wrote, Jesus said to me, I know you feel confused about your cancer, but I'm not confused. And he's not confused about whatever you're facing. He said, I will heal you 
and you will have a full life to walk in all that I have prepared for you to do. Isn't that a great word to hold on to? Yes, yes indeed. And on July 13th, God said to me, I love you. Whenever I ask God for a word, that's usually the first thing he says to me. I didn't mention it each time, just saved it for this moment. But he loves you. Yes. He loves you very much. And he said to me, thank you for walking on the water of cancer. I did not let you sink. I brought you through it. And you are free to say, I am cancer free. <laughs> yeah. What a testimony. <clears throat> We've heard people in this house declare before us that they are cancer-free. In this saying, Jesus invites us six times not to worry. Do you think he meant it? We can live a worry-free life. I invite you to give up worrying today. Give your worries to Jesus because he can handle them. If you're worried about your future, I invite you to put your trust in the one who knows the future you're worried about whether or not you'll be in heaven with Jesus, spend eternity with God in his very presence, I invite you to put your worries in the hands of Jesus. He died for you in your place so that you could spend eternity with him. He died to forgive you of your sin, and he died to heal you of all our diseases. Thank Jesus for dying for you on the cross. Ask him to forgive you and to, for all the sins you've committed and to commit your life to him. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us with this wonderful saying of yours to fuel us in life to live worry-free lives. Now, thank you, Lord, for those who've prayed with me this moment. Receive Jesus as your Savior. Ask him to forgive you. And make him your child and fill you with his Holy Spirit. And if you have a disease today, at the same time, we release a healing into your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, forgive us for the times we have worried. We choose to let go of worry and anxiety now and instead to be full of thankfulness. Remind us today what an amazing Father you are and help us to continually take delight in all the ways you care for us. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.